This afternoon, anger and outrage, a fierce reaction to the scrapping of Adelaide's supercar street race. Also, caught by surprise, a dust devil touches down in an SA schoolyard. Southern suburbs mum and her baby son fall victim to heartless firebugs. Australia joins world condemnation of a horror terror attack in France. And later, a charging e-bike bursts into flames, sparking a Christmas gift warning. Live from Adelaide, 7 News with Mike Smithson. Good afternoon. The decision to axe the Adelaide 500 has been slammed by some of the country's top racing identities. Today it emerged SA Health wasn't behind the call despite the government blaming COVID-19. Andrea Nicholas has the details. Race car drivers and their fans are furious. Adelaide's Superloop 500 is no more. They say they've been blindsided by this decision and it doesn't make economic sense. Speaking from Melbourne today, legendary driver and commentator Mark Scave, who won the race in 2002 and 3, says the Premier's got it wrong. It's gobsmacked me. I, I, I can't believe that in a motorsport community and a, and a community that just loves it, I mean, the fans just love this event. Driver Nick Perkhat's gone even further on social media, taking aim at the Brains Trust behind the call. He says the race is the reason he started driving V8s. I think they're delusional and they're going to realise what they've, what they've lost pretty quickly. But the Premier says the numbers no longer stack up. What we have seen in recent years is a reduction in the number of people who have been attending this event. We've seen an increase in costs. We've seen a reduction in the amount of corporate support. He says COVID-19's been the nail in the coffin. The implications of living in this COVID environment, this event has become unviable. COVID is a cop-out in this instance. But our chief medico says don't blame me, she wasn't even consulted. In this instance we were not approached so we haven't had any opportunity to feed into that process. East End eateries already on their knees say they were counting on those visitors. It will suck out a fair bit of the bottom line. It's just such a struggle at the moment and having all those things taken away, it's just going to make it even harder. But Tail and Bend businesses could be standing by to cash in. Owner of the Bend racetrack Sam Shaheen says he's ready and able to fill the void. But the opposition says it's hopeful of reversing the decision if it can win government in two years' time. I've already been in touch with senior levels of uh, Supercars Australia. The big question is what it will cost us in the meantime to pull out of the contract before it ended in 2021. We were supposed to host the event later this year. Students in Wyala have been forced to run for cover as a powerful gust sends sheets of metal flying. Meteorologists are calling it a dust devil and warn there's no way of knowing when they'll hit. <laughs> It came without warning. The students in its path barely had time to act. <laughs> the dust devil formed on the boundary of Wyala High School yesterday morning, picking up a large sheet of metal and sending it hurtling across the sports field. It came out of nowhere. Uh, very suddenly the wind picked up and we saw this really big piece of metal flying through the air. The freak event, the result of a sudden wind change. Very little notice, so not something that you can forecast. You suddenly get the wind spinning up and you get updrafts going into the convective cloud, the cumulus. The sheet metal came from a nearby construction site, the force of its landing damaging a staff member's car, but students were lucky. Everyone had to run from the oval, but thankfully no one was hurt. And there was more wild weather this morning. The owner of this car woke to find it hidden underneath the branches of a large tree. <laughs> The Bureau says this weather may seem out of the ordinary, but is to be expected around this time of year. It is a system that you don't get every day, but uh, those sorts of systems are relatively common in spring. Tim Hatfield, 7 News. A young family, including a seven-month-old baby boy, has been targeted by arsonists just weeks after moving to Adelaide's southern suburbs. Peter Caldercott has the details. Natasha Brown couldn't believe her eyes when she woke just before 4am to see her Mazda CX-7 engulfed in flames. And there was about five police officers, there was a lot of orange flames and huge oh. amounts of smoke. Look how burnt it is. It's like the whole back of it is just gone. Yeah, I can smell it. Some neighbours feared the car would explode. I thought the petrol tank was going to go bang, but front two tyres... First, first, 
So, and then it just caught on fire and then the fire brigade and as soon as they come, it intensed even more. Natasha's family, including seven month old Archie, had just moved to Christie's Beach from New South Wales three weeks ago. It came a bit teary because I realised that all of my son's items are inside, his pram and his kindy bag and his baby seat and all of that. So it, it just made us feel a little bit vulnerable and and yeah, quite emotional. Police say CCTV shows someone running away from the fire towards the beach on Gulfview Road. It's pretty bad. Yeah. I can't believe it. I'd burn their fingers, that's for sure. Fortunately, the family is insured. Damage to the car and baby accessories has been estimated at about $15,000. A paedophile who allegedly wanted to infect children with HIV has rushed to plead guilty, entitling him to a sizeable sentencing discount before a law change. Jad Brook has confessed to seven of 44 charges against him. He wasn't due to face court again until March, but had his matter called on today, just 72 hours before the maximum discount for an early guilty plea slash from 40 to 25 per cent. Brooke is accused of being part of a global online pedophile network and abusing at least two boys. For the second time in less than two weeks, France is reeling from a deadly terror attack. Two women and a man were killed in a church in Nice. One of the victims was almost beheaded. The French president has vowed not to give in as he deployed more soldiers to guard the streets. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has condemned the attack. These multiple attacks are despicable, they're disgraceful. Not only are they an attack on the individuals and their families, but they are an attack on liberty. Europe Bureau Chief Hugh Whitfeld has this report. The morning mass was just beginning. One of the victims was said to be praying when the armed man launched the attack. He survived being gunned down by police, a 21-year-old Tunisian who arrived in Europe just weeks ago on a boat from North Africa. The mayor in Nice has described what happened as Islamo-fascist barbarism. Gunshots at Nice's Catholic Cathedral. Oh, as police move in to take down a terrorist yelling Alu Akbar, the attacker had just beheaded an elderly female worshipper, fatally attacked the male church warden, 45-year-old Vincent Locke, and a third victim who made it outside to seek help at a cafe but died soon after. Officers describing the scene inside the church as a vision of horror. Il ne fait aucun doute. There is no doubt what was behind the motives of the assailant, who didn't stop repeating Alu Akbar, even as he was being treated by paramedics at the scene. 250 kilometres away, police gunned down another attacker, shot dead after he threatened passers-by in Avignon with a handgun. Streets in the south of France flooded with armed police as the president visited the scene in Nice. La France qui est attaquée. It is quite clearly France that has been attacked, Emmanuel Macron said. Following reports, a security guard at the French consulate in the Saudi city of Jeddah had also been attacked. An extra 4,000 soldiers now deployed across France to protect schools and places of worship. French teacher Samuel Paty was beheaded two weeks ago outside his school in Paris. Uh, seemingly retribution for showing students in his class a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. And since then there's been an increasingly toxic atmosphere between France and the broader Muslim world as Emmanuel Macron takes an increasingly hardline stance against Islamic extremism. He has said he wants to liberate French Muslims from foreign influences and that sparked a furious reaction across the Muslim world. We've seen protests uh, from Somalia to Iran to the Palestinian territories in recent days and some of those protests have even continued in the hours after this attack in Nice. On this occasion, the French president saying it was Catholics who were targeted. The Bushfire Royal Commission has handed down its recommendations following one of the most devastating seasons in history. The report has called for better coordination between all levels of government to protect lives and property. Taylor Aiken has more. The final report into the Black Summer bushfires has found that Australia must be better prepared for more frequent and extreme weather events. From bushfires to cyclones and floods, the report warns weather events will be more unpredictable and difficult to manage as temperatures continue to rise globally. 
A key recommendation in the report is for greater cooperation and coordination across all levels of government and agencies, with the federal government to be given the power to declare a state of national emergency able to take action whether or not a state has asked for support. I have to, uh, have to make it clear we are not planning on taking over any of the emergency service roles that states quite adequately and more than adequately undertake at the moment. Part of its advice on information and warnings included calls to expedite the rollout of a nationally consistent fire danger rating system and a public warning system, encouraging the government to explore the feasibility of a national app. Making sure that the public has confidence in that harmonisation and what that looks like and how it's displayed to them and giving them that confidence uh, will save lives. There are also calls for a national fleet of aerial firefighting resources. In response to the findings, Minister for Emergency Management David Littleproud says he believes the recommendations are pragmatic, however some issues were for the states to respond to. The minister adding that the government will examine the recommendations in detail and that they will be discussed before Cabinet next week. Well, love it or loathe it, Halloween's looking more popular than ever this year, even with COVID restrictions at play. Live now to Amelia and... How's the forecast looking for the spookiest day of the year? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, after grey skies and some light showers around today, the weather's looking better as the weekend rolls on. It's great news for those attending one of the many Halloween events that are on this weekend, like Carnival, which is on here at the showgrounds for the next week or so. Or if you're planning on getting dressed up in costume and exploring the neighbourhood for treats, the Halloween tradition of trick-or-treating has even got the blessing from our chief medico, provided it's done right. My recommendation is that you stay within your own neighbourhood with the trick-or-treating and knock on the doors of people that you know. We're also being advised to use hand sanitizer, keep our distance and to only stock, or if you're trick-or-treating, take wrapped lollies. And interestingly, uh, we're even expecting a full moon tomorrow night too, Smith, so a very spooky forecast. Mm, might have to sleep with the light on again. Head on 7 News, thanks Amelia for that. Head on 7 News this afternoon, an unreal road to safety. The simulator set to save lives on the southeastern freeway. Also, Donald Trump and Joe Biden converge on what could be a decisive battleground. Off the rails, the shocking images of a train crash all caught on camera. And later, she wanted to brighten up her neighbourhood, but drew an unexpected response instead. You need more. You need something extra. You need 7 Plus. See the show uncensored, unseen moments, plus the interrogations uncut, and much more. This is SAS Australia, now on 7 Plus. One of Macca's biggest promotions is coming this November. A different deal every single day, all month long. It's called 30 Days, 30 Deals, and it's only on the My Macca's app, so download it before the deals begin. Ladies, what's the first thing you take off when you get home? Your bra. Underwire digs, ouch, and back fat from bra straps is embarrassing. Introducing Ceramia, a bra so supporting and flattering, yet so comfortable, you won't even know you're wearing a bra. Look and feel Ceramia good from the front, the back, the sides, even the straps. The secret is Ceramia's double conforming lifting straps. The lace strap is a lifting wrap, just criss and cross, to be cradled in comfort and youthfully lifted. Ceramia comes with adjustable support straps, so you get double the support double the comfort and double the smoothness, all without underwire. Ceramia gives you 360 degrees of soft, breathable fabric, designed with front and back cooling mesh ventilation, so hot air flows out and fresh air flows in. I'm literally obsessed with this bra. It is super functional and super comfortable. Feels like I'm wearing nothing. I mean, look at it. <laughs> Love it. That's a bra that your body is supposed to fit. This is a bra that fits perfectly to your body. Ceramia fits all shapes and supports all sizes. 
A bra so supporting and flattering, yet so comfortable, you won't even know you're wearing a bra. So no more cutting straps, no more poking underwire, and no more unsightly back fat. Call Global Shop Direct or go online to order Sarah Mia in your choice of black, white or nude for the low price on your screen. Want even more value? Upgrade your order and save with our Value 3 pack. You'll get one black, one white and one nude bra and save an amazing $70. If Sarah Mia isn't the most comfortable soft bra you've ever worn, just send it back within 30 days for a full refund of the product price. Finally, a bra that fits perfectly to your body. Order Sarah Mia today. There's no place like home, especially if it's your first. So get home sooner in Oz with me's first home buyer offer. Save on rates, LMI and pay no annual fees. Speak to me or your broker today. Protect your gutters with All Seasons Gutter Guard. And for a limited time, we'll give you 25% off a fully installed gutter guard solution and a free upgrade to aluminium mesh plus a free gutter clean. Visit allseasonsgutters.com.au This home near the city, sold by McGain. Here in the south, sold by McGain. Down by the beach, that's right, sold by McGain again. Buying or selling, there's one line to remember. Sold by McGain again. So, love, there's only that robot costume left. Oh, this one. Make the choice easy with Toyota. Get the improved Prado. Now with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus more power. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. This is Adelaide's 4 o'clock news on 7 and it's a grey old day at the bay. Not exactly the weather to be getting into the water at Glenelg, but still a great place to catch up with friends this afternoon. Virtual reality is being used to help prevent more carnage on a dangerous stretch of road coming into Adelaide that's seen many horror accidents. As Lauren Rose reports, the truckies will be able to practice the route before they get behind the wheel. The long descent into Adelaide is incredibly high risk for truck drivers unfamiliar with this stretch of the southeastern freeway. Inexperience has led to tragic consequences at the bottom of the freeway. A truckie killed two motorists waiting at the lights in 2014 and the man behind the wheel of this out of control semi hit and killed a fellow truckie in 2010. It is in no one's agenda that drives a truck or owns trucks to ever be involved in these terrible accidents. It's hoped this brand new simulator will prevent further deaths by allowing drivers to practice travelling the down track before they face the real thing. It's very accurate. It's like driving a real truck. You, you've got all the vibrations and everything else. It'll tell you if you're braking too heavy. It'll, it'll tell you if you're oversteering and overdriving. After a coronial inquest into the two fatal crashes, it became an offence to use the wrong gear coming down the freeway. But so far, only interstate drivers have been fined. It's hoped we'll see more of these simulators rolled out across the country and their use will become compulsory. If there is a place to make this mandatory, in training down the track, then I think we should work with industry to make that happen. The simulation training will be available for truckies to complete by the end of next month. It's been a tumultuous battle for one of the most unpredictable states in the US election. Donald Trump and Joe Biden converged on Florida this morning, rallying for the top job. Ashley Mullaney sent this report from the campaign trail. Good afternoon. Well, it's considered a must-win state for Republicans and Donald Trump is spending the final days of the campaign drumming up support here in Florida. It was a game of cat and mouse after rival candidate Joe Biden announced an event in Tampa, so did the president, and it was a vastly different event at that. Guests were soaked by firefighters as they tried to cool down in the 32-degree heat. Packed in to see this, Donald Trump and wife Melania rallying together for the first time in months. The president touting news of an economic recovery after new data revealed America's economy expanded at the fastest rate on record in the third quarter. President Trump chooses to move this country forward. We are doing great. Do you see the number today? 33.1 GDP, the biggest in the history of our country by almost triple, right? Almost triple. No, it's uh, very much bigger than any GDP we've ever had. The president's trailing Joe Biden in national polls and key battleground states. His narrow path to the White House hinges largely on claiming the 29 electoral college votes up for grabs here. You hold the key 
If Florida goes blue, it's over. It's over. More than 80 million Americans have already cast their votes early, more than half of the total number of votes in 2016. Come next week, millions more will head to the polls, but it could take days, even weeks, until a winner is declared if Trump follows through on his threat to challenge the result in the courts. Dramatic video has captured the moment a freight train derailed, causing rail cars to pile up on the tracks and spill onto a nearby road in Texas. 25 carriages piled up on top of one another. One car was carrying an unknown corrosive product. Residents in surrounding homes had to leave while containment crews mopped up the scene. At least five people have died and millions of residents are without power after Hurricane Zeta smashed through US Gulf states. The system made landfall in Louisiana, tearing off roofs and uprooting trees. One man was electrocuted by fallen power lines while another in Georgia was crushed by a falling tree. One Mississippi resident drowned in floodwaters. And Britain's opposition party has suspended Jeremy Corbyn their former leader over his reaction to a highly critical report on anti-Semitism. The human rights watchdog found Labor responsible for unlawful discrimination during Mr Corbyn's leadership, but Mr Corbyn said that the scale of anti-Semitism within Labor had been dramatically overstated. Now let's check in with Hazy. Yes, Hazy's here. What's coming up in sport? Thanks, Smitho. Well, coming up, we'll hear from New Port Adelaide CEO Matthew Richardson after he was named replacement for Keith Thomas. It was a big night for defender Darcy Byrne-Jones, who scored his first Jack Cahill medal at the best and fairest. And the Redbacks struggle against Victoria at Glenelg Oval on day one of their Sheffield Shield clash. All that, plenty more in sports. Smitho? Thanks, Hazy. We'll see you a bit later. Ahead on Seven's afternoon news right here in Adelaide, Queensland says it won't rush to fully open borders by Christmas, despite the PM's pleas. Also, how medical cannabis is changing the lives of a record number of Australians. An elderly driver's minor mistake makes a major mess at a Norwood bottle shop, and a woman's innocent footpath chalk art draws a sinister reaction. Feel the excitement. Racing now. Absolutely history. Don't miss a minute of the Golden Eagle. Live Saturday on 7. Explore Cairns and Great Barrier Reef this summer. Enjoy four nights in Port Douglas. Breakfast daily. And car hire from $339. Book now at Phil Hoffman Travel. Let's see what it's got. Comfort, bucket loads. It's tough, really tough. But smart. Brand new Mazda VT50, the complete package. So, so. Think. Welcome. Think inspired. Think durable. Think options. Think vision. Think tiles and stone. Think service ceramics. Muscle and osteo pain can really tie you down. That pain is caused by inflammation. Nurofen helps reduce inflammation and relieve osteo and muscle pain for up to eight hours. Break free with Nurofen. Great Southern RV understands that when you're buying a caravan, you expect great people, excellent service, honest advice and exceptional caravans. Great Southern RV specialises in all things caravan, with leading brands like Retreat, Regent, Urban and Domain Caravans, plus Stony Creek Hybrids and Camper Trailers. They service and repair all caravan makes right across this great state. Award-winning Great Southern RV is SA family owned and operated. Honesty, integrity, reliability. It has to be Great Southern RV. 
Now is the perfect time to upgrade. Stay right at home because whatever your budget, Appliances Online have got you covered with the best brands at great prices. For a huge range of kitchen and laundry appliances, TVs, barbecues and more with price match guarantee, free next day delivery, free removal of old products and 24-7 Australian customer support. Visit appliancesonline.com.au now. your story of memorable firsts at Pandora. Queensland Premier has finally revealed her decision on state borders, which will remain closed to Victoria and Sydney. While the rest of New South Wales will be free to visit the Sunshine State, desperate tourism operators have slammed the decision. Joel Dry has more. Well, it's been the most anticipated decision for the past several months and today, finally, the Premier provided some clarity on exactly what is happening with Queensland's borders. And for the people outside the state, it's mixed news. Anastasia Palaszczuk has announced that from November 3, people in all regional areas of New South Wales will be able to access Queensland, but for the five million or so people of Greater Sydney, the border remains closed. Victorians will also continue to be shut out. I will accept the advice of Dr Young, and that is exactly what I did today. I kept my commitment. I'm honest with the people of Queensland, that is what I said I would do, and that is exactly what I've done. I've accepted her recommendations to me, lock, stock and barrel. The Chief Health Officer said her decision was based on ongoing concern about community transmission in Sydney and Victoria. Which means that they have um, transmission and they don't know where it's coming from. Those people in regional New South Wales will be able to drive through Sydney to access Queensland and also fly out of Sydney Airport to get to the Sunshine State. The New South Wales Premier has called the decision disappointing. The boss of Qantas has said it's frankly ridiculous and tourism operators here in the Sunshine State have been damning, saying it will cost jobs and force businesses to close. The Premier has committed to continue to review the decision at the end of each month. That means if the odd case of community transmission continues to surface in Sydney or Victoria, the border to those places could remain closed past Christmas. Customers at a Norwood bottle shop were lucky to escape uninjured after an elderly woman crashed into the store's entrance this morning. The 91-year-old clipped the car in the Dan Murphy's car park on the parade, causing her to lose control and mistakenly hit the accelerator. She wasn't hurt but copped an on-the-spot fine and will now have her licence reviewed. The coronavirus pandemic has seen an increase in the number of people prescribed to use medicinal cannabis to treat a number of conditions including anxiety and chronic pain. Serena Andaloro has this exclusive report. We have seen a spike in medicinal cannabis prescriptions through COVID. The Therapeutic Goods Administration adding more than 6,000 patients in September alone. That's the biggest increase on record. Prescription cannabis oil has changed 50-year-old Simon Sweeting's life. A chronic pain sufferer, after he suffered a spinal injury, he was previously taking 15 tablets a day. Before the oil, the pain was debil debilitating and probably couldn't function most of the day, uh, whereas now I can function and I can get to work now and, and spend time with my, uh, my, my family. Australian Natural Therapeutics Group was the first New South Wales company granted a licence to produce large quantities of medicinal cannabis oil for commercial use. They produce finished medicine. The industry growing rapidly. They say demand is so high they will soon need more capacity to cultivate. The highest number of prescriptions in Australia is for chronic pain tends to be associated with cancer or cancer treatments, but there's a whole range of, of uh, conditions that cannabis is being felt to be applicable for. Anxiety, sleep, um, appetite, uh, seizure related issues and, and, and pain being the predominant. The local industry is highly regulated by the federal government. There are only 32 licensed producers in the entire country, with most medicines imported 
from Canada. A Melbourne woman has come under attack for drawing chalk artwork on the footpath. As Louisa Cheatley explains, she received a sinister letter accusing her of putting lives at risk. Good afternoon. Fiona Cracknell started doing chalk drawings in this Gladstone Park street during lockdown to brighten her neighbour's days. But the reaction from one resident was very different. They penned an angry letter to the council and sent a copy to Fiona. They didn't leave their name, just insults, calling her pretentious for her apparently dangerous drawings, saying chalk is a powder-based substance and will cause the footpath to lose grip. It is a very dangerous thing to have over the footpath. They also demanded the council repair it within three days. They may also get it into their skulls that graffiti of council land is illegal, placing the lives of locals at risk. Mrs Cracknell disagrees. I just did it just to make them happy, you know, just to see the kids' smiles as they walk past on their one hour of freedom every day. You know, you only get one hour when you're all locked in. <laughs> so to have that much hate, it just hurt me. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. Fiona was making all these beautiful drawings to help people and make people feel happy. You know, someone wants to just upset her. Oh my word, my grandchildren hang out the window as we're coming past. I see people always stopped here looking. Despite the letter, Mrs Cracknell won't stop drawing, saying one person's opinion won't deter her from making people smile. Yeah, leave her alone. Still to come on Seven's afternoon news here in Adelaide, a warning ahead of Christmas that battery-powered toy or device can catch fire. Also an American takeover bid bolsters the price of Aussie insurance giant AMP. And ahead at six, a special report on a medical condition affecting one in five women. This will be a game night to remember. Oh boy. Someone in this room is going to be taken. Oh, it's a murder mystery part. You're not going to know what's real. That was really good. And what's fake. I'm confused, so this isn't the end of this whole thing? This gun real? The premiere of Game Night, tonight on 7. Macca's Chicken McPieces. Tender 100% Aussie chicken breast in an irresistible coating. Perfect with the side of Aussie favourite chicken salt shaker fries. Now that's too good to keep to yourself. As our economy recovers, investing in new skills is more important than ever. Opportunities in health and social care are available now, and skills in defence, construction and technology will play a big part in our future. We need skilled people in all kinds of roles. There are many choices for you to explore, including apprenticeships and shorter courses. Explore your passion. Visit skills.sa.gov.au. A message from the Government of South Australia. This is my idea of washing, sunshine and fresh air, as well as energy efficient drying on an Austral clothesline. Austral, the trusted first choice in clotheslines. They're 100% Australian made and owned. Visit Austral's website for the full range and nearest stockist. If you're working from home, lost your job or want to reshape your career, Seek's tools and resources can steer you in the right direction. Search Seek Career Advice. What a day. Time to sweat it out. Gotta sweat it out. Let the pressure out. Push on. Come on. Gotta sweat it out. It's how to get it out. Tomorrow, bring it on. Eye on full hydration. Sweat it out with Powerade. I've suffered from plantar fasciitis for about five years. I'm a case manager at a school and I'm on my feet all the time and that pain is constant, 24-7. A work colleague told me about the Good Feet store. Since I have been to the shop, honestly, it has changed my life completely. I'm in no pain whatsoever. I'm Lee and that's my Good Feet story. See for yourself with a free personalised arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. The all-new Nissan Duke, featuring Apple CarPlay. Let's improvise.
the greatest risk of all. I'm going to take the top off. One question for big dollars or disaster. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. You're watching 7's Adelaide 4 o'clock news and this is the scene at Wavell this afternoon. All is in redness for the Halloween onslaught as young trick or treaters take to the streets in search of some sweets. Now recapping our top stories and the Premier's being slammed by some of the country's top racing identities over his decision to axe the Adelaide 500. Students were forced to run for cover as a sudden gust sent sheets of metal flying across a wireless school oval. And arsonists have targeted a young family with a seven-month-old baby boy who've just moved to Adelaide's southern suburbs. Firefighters have issued an urgent warning about the dangers of lithium batteries after a Lonsdale home went up in flames this morning. As Rosie Barnett reports, a man was charging his e-bike battery under his bed when his mattress caught on fire. Firefighters raced to the scene in the early hours of this morning. They say a man had woken to find the bed he was sleeping in engulfed in flames. He alerted the other occupants and they managed to escape the blaze, but the bedroom was gutted. Smoke and flames pouring out of his bedroom. His uh, electrical battery caught on fire. He was charging the battery for his e-bike under his bed, a move firefighters say is a recipe for disaster. When you contain an electronic device on charge in a small area, it leads to overheating, which may lead to a fire. They're hoping the blaze serves as a timely reminder. With Christmas fast approaching, homes will be flooded with electronic toys and gadgets. The MFS says buyers should avoid purchasing online from overseas manufacturers. They don't often comply with Australian standards and can easily combust. We're always concerned when we go to incidents that could easily have been prevented will always be available to help the community, but the community can help us. They also urge residents to charge batteries in areas with strong ventilation and above all, make sure you have a working fire alarm. If it wasn't for that smoke alarm, I think he would have died. This morning's fire caused around $30,000 damage. The landlord is insured, but the tenant's belongings are not. And a fire has destroyed a nightclub in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley. Emergency crews received a call from residents about smoke billowing from the second level of the building. Eleven fire trucks were sent to the scene to tackle the blaze. It's not yet clear what sparked the fire. AMP's share price has surged after a US investment giant offered to buy the company. The wealth management firm was decimated by a series of scandals in the wake of the Banking Royal Commission. Chris Reason has the latest. Analysts say it's no great surprise that an approach has been made. AMP has signalled it was open to the idea of a possible sale when it launched its wide-ranging review just last month. However, the embattled company is insisting this is a long way from done. The AMP started back in 1849, 171 years of history. At one stage, when it was first listed in 1998, it was Australia's third largest company. But of course, it's the recent history that has snatched all the headlines and for all the wrong reasons. The Hain Banking Royal Commission uncovered a litany of scandal, the fees for no service outrage and the attempts to hide it from the regulator ASIC. And then more recently, the nightmares of the sexual harassment scandal that saw management again shake up. But today it was confirmed that the US private equity company RS Management Corporation had made an official offer. Now, AMP has issued a statement to the ASX confirming the offer but noting it is quote indicative, non-binding, conditional and very preliminary. In other words Sally it has a long way to go before this sale actually eventuates. Many analysts saying there's a very good chance too that if the sale does go through there's a good chance the company will be split up. Either way, the news pleased AMP shareholders. There was a surge on the market today and the price of AMP up almost 21% at one stage. Checking finance now with Stephen Daglian at Comsec. And good afternoon, Stephen. How did the Australian share market wrap up the month? Uh, good afternoon, Mike. Well, look, it was a sluggish end, actually. The ASX 200 down by around half a percent today. I guess the good news is that we still managed to lift by about 2% this month, but certainly not what it could have been. At one stage, we're up about four times as much earlier this month, and we're on track to have the best monthly advance in over 30 years. Then, of course, the coronavirus started to get worse in the Northern Hemisphere, which led to more lockdowns in places like France. Uh, that certainly wasn't helpful. So today, what we saw was a mixed bag. There were some winners 
is, though, uh, energy stocks, which were the worst this week because of the oil price slumping, they actually did OK, with Woodside up around 1%. The banks also held up quite well, ahead of three of the big banks releasing profit results next week. The big winner was AMP, which was just mentioned, up in the order of 20%. And some of the worst performers were travel stocks like Qantas and Sydney Airport, both hitting their worst levels in a month, and Flight Centre and Webjet in that travel agent group were both down uh, to two-month lows. And that's partly because Queensland's decided to not open the borders up to Greater Sydney and Victoria, and the Aussie dollar's at 70.4 US. Good on you. Thanks, Stephen. Time for sport now. And, Hazy, great to see you here. It's been a, a busy day in the AFL free agency. Yeah, it certainly has, Smith. Though. The Crows will learn exactly what sort of compensation they'll get for Rory Atkins. The Cats have landed a three-time Premiership hawk. We'll have all the details very shortly. Also coming up, Darcy Byrne-Jones caps off a sensational individual year at last night's best and fairest. And the Redbacks make a sluggish start against Victoria in the Sheffield Shield. Chicken and coffee? Yep, coffee. Who'd have thought it could be the perfect flavour match? These smell so good. But this will blow your taste buds. It's a sensory overload. And just wait for how we reinvent pork chops. Oh, how could you not love that, eh? On Better Homes, tonight at 7 on 7. studies the best athletes to create the most advanced range of sports fuel. Gatorade. You fuel us, we fuel you. CMI Toyota, SA's number one selling Toyota dealer, makes the choice easy with the new Hilux. Now with more power and three and a half ton towing capacity. Plus, get a $1,500 finance deposit bonus on selected 4x4 models, including SR5. And don't forget, your business may be eligible for an instant asset write-off. Hurry to CMI Toyota West Terrace City, Cheltenham or Christie's Beach. We love to see you smiling. Oh, what a feeling, Toyota. If you want to get serious about smashing your power bills, here's a couple of easy wins from Sunboost. An instant $200 discount on the popular 6.6 kilowatt maxi saver solar system, still an unbeatable 3391. Call 1300 Sunboost. Ready to taste freedom? Queensland is waiting, and your options are wide open. From the tropics to the coast, the outback to the islands, the cities to the rainforest and reef from the countryside to the water slides. It's time to explore like never before. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! On the way. Queensland is good to go. Escape to a better home loan. With great rates like this and home loan specialists you can trust, People's Choice can help set you free. Call 131182, visit us in branch or online. She's hammered that. Australia's cricket captain faces off with a star recruit. That is as good as it gets. Elise Perry and Meg Lanning go head to head to finish off a huge Saturday of cricket. Then Sunday, the explosive action continues. A huge weekend of women's big bash starts Saturday on 7 May. Hello again, and a new era has begun at Alberton with Matthew Richardson replacing Keith Thomas as CEO, while Darcy Byrne-Jones finished off a stunning year, taking home his first John Cahill medal. Day one of a new dawn at Alberton. I'm really excited about the opportunity and, uh, and can't thank the board mm. and um, the board enough for the opportunity. You can't afford somebody to take a year or two to settle in. <laughs> um, you've got to have someone that's, that's match fit to take on the role. You need to embrace that expectation. Um, the expectation doesn't come from anywhere. It lives here, it's been here for 150 years. 
Richardson beat a host of candidates in the race to replace Keith Thomas, the man responsible for the power's remarkable turnaround. He sent me a text this morning and it was just hang on for dear life. Um, so, um, so I appreciated that. Defender Darcy Byrne-Jones capped off his career best year in perfect fashion at last night's best and fairest. And now first time John Cale medalist and great player of our footy club, Darcy Byrne-Jones. DBJ added the John Cahill medal to his maiden All-Australian blazer, pipping a highly fancy midfielder, Travis Boak. I don't have anything planned. Um, I didn't come into tonight thinking that I would win this. I thought Bokey would be a, a runaway winner, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say, to be honest. Um, probably had a few too, too many beers and a couple of reds. And, um, <laughs> and thank you to all you boys. Um, I appreciate you as, as friends and, and colleagues and um, you know, hope we can achieve something special next year. Theodoropoulos, 7 News. Well, former Crow Rory Atkins has officially become a son with Gold Coast lodging a four-year deal. In return, the Crows will be compensated with a late second-round pick. Geelong have landed three-time Premiership Hawk Isaac Smith, the 31-year-old knockback, a three-year offer from the Demons. And Carlton has lodged paperwork for restricted free agent GWS star Zach Williams. Well, the Redbacks are off to a shocking start on day one against Victoria in the Sheffield Shield. Henry Hunt was out after notching a half century, while Harry Nilsson and Wes Agar are battling to keep SA alive. The Redbacks batted first and Henry Hunt had a decent start. Connor McInerney got a chance at the top of the order with Jake Weatherald out, but he couldn't make the most of his opportunity. Pulled away on the onside in the air and he's caught down at backward square leg on the fence. And Brad Davis soon followed. Bowen again, nicked and caught behind by Gotch. Travis Head was out to repeat his Tasmanian heroics before lunch, but the skipper couldn't even get into double digits. Oh, that one beats the edge of the bat and must have got a nick on it too. Travis Head, the captain. Ferguson was sent packing to make matters even worse for the Redbacks, while Hunt tried to pick up the pace, smashing a stunning 14 from four balls. Pulled away in the air, high and handsome, over the top for six. He didn't stick around for much longer, bowled out on 50. Glenelg boy Liam Scott's huge six landed on Anzac Highway, but he was the one to hit the road a short time later. Evans from the southern edge to caught at second slip. The Redbacks already giving themselves a mountain to climb so far on day one. Lucas Ronaldo, 7 News. To NRL and Wayne Bennett has named eight Origin rookies for Wednesday's series opener at Adelaide Oval. The Maroons aren't concerned about their lack of experience. A lot of no-nonsense front rowers and locks and, and, and back rowers that we've got in this team. Uh, and, and Josh Papali is probably the, the form prop of the whole competition. Luke Keary will make his Blues debut while Cody Walker has been named on the bench. Eels stars Clint Gutherson and Junior Paulo will also debut. Well, the Wallabies have had their final training session before tomorrow night's do-or-die Bledisloe Cup test in Sydney. With James O'Connor sidelined with a knee injury, the Aussies will take two rookies into the clash against New Zealand. Noah Lelicio replaces O'Connor and Brumby's teammates Kirai Simone debuts at inside centre for the injured Matt Samua. Well, one of Australia's richest turf races gets underway tomorrow with the running of the $7.5 million Golden Eagle. Champion trainer Chris Waller is eyeing back-to-back -back victories at Rose Hill Gardens and says it's one of the best races on the calendar. Definitely Derby Day has always been one of the biggest on the calendar. Now Sydney's competing with Melbourne, putting on these big races and uh, yeah, it, it comes together as a great day for sport. The race is live on 7 tomorrow. And Smilo, that is our look at sport for this afternoon. And congratulations to Keith Thomas as well. Sensational mm. job in the chair. And Darcy Byrne-Jones, very worthy winner. Probably goes about his footy. You probably would the uh, same. You said Travis Bloke hard. was going to win. You I promised me Travis. I thought would be a chance. I think everyone thought Travis would be a chance. But it was a nice count. I had Darcy Byrne-Jones. No, you seven. did not. That is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, AJ. Still to come on Sevens News from Adelaide this afternoon. Special health report on the condition affecting one in five women. Also, Adelaide Zoo residents getting into the swing of Halloween with some creepy pumpkins. And we'll cross live to Amelia for all the weekend weather details. You're invited to the massive primetime event. 
Together, they should be unbeatable. Australia's most formidable brainiacs. Who's brave enough to take them on all at once? Oh, this is big. <laughs> uh, who wants to be a millionaire champion? He's won everything. A world record winner of Sale of the Century. <laughs> you are quizzing royalty. One by one, they will take them on. I was on the chase. How did you go? I beat you. <laughs> Full record money. $150,000. Beat the Chasers, Sunday at 7 on 7. WaterPro are here to help you with all your watering needs. We supply competitively priced, professional quality irrigation equipment. Commercial projects, golf courses, councils, landscapers and homeowners. Because we're a design to supply business, we can help you with a do-it-yourself system or we can connect you with one of our qualified trade clients to do the work for you. And we're SA owned and operated. Make your connection with a local. Shop in store, via the phone or buy online. WaterPro, 20 King William Street, Kent Town. The University of Adelaide is somewhere you can do what you love and become who you wish to be. A world-class institution in the heart of one of the world's most livable cities. Your place is here. Your time is now. I'm back for a new Step 1 Bamboo Underwear ad. My legs are still like tree trunks, but they don't feel like this anymore because these Ultra Glide panels stop right up and chafing. Step 1, get some! Why choose Booper? Because you'll get six weeks free when you join on eligible products. Because who doesn't want to save a little more? Call 134 135 to find out more. T's and C's apply. It's the first Saturday of summer at the Jones's Stratco Home Stadium and the shady seats are filling fast. Let's cross to the action. First round's kicking off. What a hit. Trying for a new PB. Go the green and gold. That's it for the seniors doubles. Look at this crowd support. Now over to you, Australia, for your chance to win your own $30,000 Stratco Home Stadium, register your Stratco National Patio Day celebration and help raise funds for Cancer Council. Introducing Australia's Best at MG. Get Australia's best-selling light hatch from just $16,690 drive away. Or Australia's best value compact SUV from just $21,990 drive away. Plus a seven-year warranty. Hurry, offer end soon. After all that we've been through, I will make it up to you. I promise to. Gippsland Dairy Yogurt. The taste made me do it. The greatest risk of all. I'm going to take the top off. Oh, wow. One question. This question stands between you and $40,000. For big dollars or disaster. Wonder Woman wears golden armor modeled on which bird? <sighs> New The Chase. Weekdays at 5 on 7. Six o'clock. Good afternoon, Bethany Hisker with your latest traffic thanks to the swag. Sterling on the freeway speeds are reduced both ways between Crafers and Sterling for ongoing work, so expect a few delays through there. Getting busy, St Bernard's Road as you're heading through McGill as well, that's due to roadworks restrictions. Sick of throwing out rotting fruit and veggies? The swag keeps produce fresh and crisp for weeks naturally. No waste, no plastic, save money and the planet, theswag.com.au. That's the latest Adelaide traffic. Now back to you, Mike. Thanks, Bethany. Well, the pandemic's being blamed for lots of things this year, including a health problem that's flown under the radar. The disorder has become the number one medical issue for women under 40. Our special health report in 7 News tonight at 6. Well, Halloween's not just for the kids. The animals at the zoo are also getting into the spirit. This year's treats have been stuffed inside creepy carved pumpkins. The co-artists were quick to tuck in, although one was perhaps a little too enthusiastic. Even Wang Wang and Funi wandered over for a close inspection. And Amelia is at somewhere spooky this afternoon, I think. How's the weekend weather looking? <laughs> 
Well, Mike, we're on the improve, and I tell you what, if you're around the showgrounds this weekend, the forecast is looking pretty spooky. The gates for Carnival have just opened here, and it's open for the next week or so. There's plenty of sideshows, spooky food, uh, and rides for the kids as well. And there are some pretty... Um, interesting characters floating around too. Now we've got grey skies tonight. They delivered the odd shower about the city today. After a low of 12.6 cool southerlies kept a lid on the temperature. Our top was 18.6 degrees. Right now it's 16 but when you factor in wind chill it feels more like 12. Elsewhere showers are inching, inching towards Canberra at the moment while in the west a different story. Currently 35 degrees in Perth as a high pressure system directs warm winds off the land over WA. Now that situation's further exacerbated by a trough that's hugging the coast there. Over our patch, that high will work to clear skies this weekend for us with conditions slowly warming as that high heads southeast. Tomorrow we're expecting plenty of sunshine across our far north, up to 25 degrees in Cooper PD and Roxby Downs, 27 for Murray and Moomba. Further south, early fog is possible about the ranges and showers are still a chance about the coast, KI and the Mount Lofty ranges clearing during the afternoon. A grey day for Mount Gambia, up to 17 there and in Victor Harbour, 20 24 is the top for Renmark, 21 for Murray Bridge, 20 for Nuriotpa, 19 for Clare and Port Lincoln, 22 for Kadena and Port Augusta. In the city, down to 12 degrees overnight, then a top of 21s on the way. There'll be a few clouds around tomorrow. That could lead to a shower, and if we do see one, it'll probably be, probably be about the hills or our southern suburbs. Drying out as the day wears on, so it should be cool but fine for trick-or-treaters at night. And Mike, it's nice for you to wear your costume a day early for us. That's very good, Amelia. And those guys look like some of the people we have in the newsroom every day. That's all from the afternoon news team. Rosanna will have our next bulletin at 6 o'clock. But from me, it's bye for now.